Hey guys, welcome back. So a friend of mine, Andy, sent me this um, vector file and he wants me to do the layout for the toolpath to see how the way that I kind of did it compares to his. He did give me the bit that he wants to use for the majority of the cutouts. Now this kind of looks to me like it might have been an image trace. Now he got this idea from this file from um, William Gallagher over in his YouTube channel. And it looks very similar to this one here. So I'm not quite sure where he got the file from. Oh, it's a little bit different on the outside. That's where he got his inspiration from, and I'm going to go ahead and start with that toolpath right now. Now, I did notice that there seems to be some anomaly right here, and I want to take care of that first. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and guess that it was from somewhere in here, that maybe he moved stuff around at some point, and it just kind of showed up there. So let me scan around and make sure there's nothing else that doesn't look like it belongs in that place. Yeah. So it doesn't look like it belongs anywhere else. See, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just press delete and we'll get rid of that little anomaly. Uh, from there, it really, it really can be quite simple. Uh, it does look like some of these items here could just be selected like that. I just selected everything by pressing control A and then holding shift, clicking this line and this line to get rid of that. And now it's going to, well, you'll see what it's going to do. Let's go ahead and set a toolpath here. And we use advanced V-carve because I don't want to really control the depth. I'm going to let the depth control itself. And like I said, he, he said that he wanted to use a V-bit. I'm just going to go in here and pick that default 302 and I'll leave the default data in here for this step over in depth from Shapeoko. Now, if you are using a different CNC, like, I don't know, a 3018, um, you might want to reduce that down. And if you're using a uh, more powerful machine, like even an X-Carve Pro or uh, the upgraded package for the Shapeoko, uh, or uh, my work bee, then um, you can uh, go a little bit more aggressively and not have any problems. I like to do this in stages, so I'll let that calculate out, and then I'll go through and run the simulation for that before moving on to the next toolpath. Now, by doing advanced VCarve, even though I'm only using one bit, it's going to drop down and do uh, basically full depth and make all these corners look real nice. Where the VCarve one, you've got to kind of tell it what depth, and that can get a little bit more uh, touch and go, per se. So we'll run the simulation here and look at what that looks like. Of the, I have it set to aluminum still from the default, but you'll get an understanding of what it's going to look like, right? So there we could do just the traces. Let's go over and look at what that um, original one looked like. So we had going in deeper in these spots. Oh, I, I do see that we've got um, some other paths in here where it could get a little messy if we change that up. But let's go ahead and change that up real quick. I do see this G here might carve inversely to the original one because it's got a nice offset. So we might have to add an offset to that G to get it to kind of carve. Um, the way that he wants it to. So let's go back in here real quick and I'll adjust this. Oh, I see that max depth. I forgot to change that. That, and we'll set that up like that. There we go, 111 minutes. That looks a little better. And I can see the tool paths in there. So this is what I was talking about with the G. It kind of carves inversely to how he had it set before. Let's go in there and see what that tool path looks before I go through and edit that real quick. See also these parts are attached and I think in the, um, in the example, they aren't quite attached. So here we have all the numbers coming out well. Let me just compare that real quick. Yeah, so it looks like we have some um, effects in some of the letters like the six and the seven and the five that the original one doesn't have. So if he wants to 
keep those uh, like this, we can leave them in there, or we can just delete those out. Just delete out the uh, vector entirely. Because it looks like we only have those inside the 5, 6, 7, and 9 anyway. So for now, actually, we'll go through and reselect one more time. Deselect that. Deselect that. And since I said I don't quite know if he's going to want these, we'll just deselect them as well. They are kind of oddly shaped from the uh, image trace that must have happened here. And you know what? We'll just set up this as a secondary V carve as well. And uh, leave me a comment below if you'd like to see a certain project. And if you want, you can send me an email as well. I'll go ahead and leave my email address in the description below. So by doing this, we'll just make this two different tool paths, one for the outside and then one for this inside once I fix it. We'll leave some of these effects in here. I'm scrolling a little bit better so I can actually click the sections I want to. I like that. Sometimes it doesn't quite love to click the right section. And then I'm holding shift as I select these to deselect them. Now you could group these together to make that whole process easier. In the beginning, I could have just grabbed just that section and made that one group. And then it would have been easier to ungroup it just now. But I didn't do that. So now we've got just this section on the outside. We're going to carve that. It does look like we're missing this dot, those dots somehow. So I might have to go back and fix that too. Yeah, some of these it did some, kind of some weird shapes in there. Not quite sure if he's going to love that. And that's primarily because this is an image trace. And if it was done in carbide, that could be why. Oh, that could be why. We're going to replace with current selection. So just those. And yeah, our depth should be fine in there. Looks like in here we end up with two spots, so let's go ahead a little bit deeper. 0.45. And that should carve those in a little bit deeper. So now while that's calculated, I'll go ahead and do what I was talking about with this G. So for that, we need to go back into design and we will offset it. I don't know, like 0.1 inside. And we'll see how that looks. So we end up with this. G portion here, that got really weird, huh? So what I'm going to do here is take these two, and I'm doing to offset as well towards the outside. That same amount. I'm going to grab these two, this one and that one, and Use the using these booleans function. Oh, and then we can delete the original from that. We do have a little bit where it doesn't quite follow the contours the way I would like in there, but we can either go through and, and edit those nodes manually and just kind of select the ones we want. And then up here for the nodes, you have to press D for delete. And I'll just delete the ones that kind of went a little funky. And then we'll see how those look. So they didn't quite fix them, but it, it gave them a better curve instead of that weird little uh, jutting in part right there. So that's how you can just edit the nodes if you want to do that. Uh, from that offset, we do have like some weird anomalies that are in here as well. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that out so it doesn't mess up my carve later on. 
So we do need this circle, and that's going to be where our uh, through hole goes. It doesn't look to be a true circle, so we might need to reestablish that. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of size it roughly and then move it over. So he's going to want to set this to the true size of whatever his um, clock mechanism is. Normally it's about a quarter of an inch and it, and it needs a little bit of clearance as well. So he may need to adjust that for his clock mechanism. We can go back to toolpaths here and that advanced V-carve has ran. So I'll go ahead and show simulation so we can see how that looks. Now all I really did was went a little deeper to make sure that we got the full depth of V-carve in all these bigger spots. I noticed that the 11 was not full depth and it was giving me like a flat down there. And I got rid of the little anomalies that were in the nine, seven, six, and five. So now we can change this over to pine. Kind of see how that's going to look. Select so now we can go back into this section, bottom and right to top left, and that will select anything it's touching. Now I don't actually want these in here. I have to scroll in more to get that. All right. So I don't want those for part of this carve. I just want these ones here. And you can just click group and it's going to group them together. And that makes selecting them, like I mentioned before, a lot easier. Like when I had to deselect them all. Oh, also when I had um, done that offset, I brought in this element right there, which I meant to delete earlier. That was part of this offset that I brought in. There might be another one right there too that it brought in. So I'm going to do that one more time again. Grab this section. And then ungroup some or unselect some of these from it by holding shift and then group them together. And that just makes the whole selection process easier if we do have to go ahead and do anything else. Should have done that first. Group the outside and the inside, but I didn't. So now that you can see that toolpath ran a lot faster, and it's not looking too bad. So now we've got both those toolpaths there. Let's go ahead and show those simulations. You can see these elements here on his are pretty much the same. We can just move on. If he wants those full in, we would just deselect these inside points, and that would make those like a full depth carve, like this one is in here, instead of those kind of little circle pieces. We can come back over here. So we have this line going around the outside of that center piece, this line here. The easiest way to do is actually contour, and then I'll set up depth and like uh, 0.1, and we've got that contour going right. We can set it to directly on the line as well. So we'll do that. And that point one might be too deep. That's kind of the only thing about following a line instead of filling a pocket is you'll have to just make sure to check that simulation to see that it looks like the way you want it to look. Did I change my bit here? I did not. So we need to change this to a 60 degree. It doesn't show you the V bits accurately in that contour toolpath there, unfortunately. So we can do that or we can... Uh, so if you wanna see what it's going to look one. like, we can set advanced V-carve, and as long as our depths are the same between that contour and this advanced V-carve, then the appearance is going to be the same. So there we can see how wide that uh, V-bit's going to look at a 0.1 depth. So if that is too wide, then uh, we might want to change that depth. But let me compare it over to this one. It looks a little thicker than these, but not quite as thick as this area. So maybe we'll thin that a so little setting bit setting it to more. 0 0.08 instead. I'm 
Okay, so that looks pretty good. It's about the same thickness as these ones over here. And then now we just have to do a perimeter and the hole. And in order to do that, we'll go ahead and select, which I set at 0.28 that inches. You might hole have to, like that I added an actual that, circle. With that selected, we can just go ahead and do the pocket since we are removing all that material. And I'm going to use an eighth inch bit. Since we're cutting all the way through here, we can either click use stock bottom and it'll enter that automatically or type in the number. All right, so that is on there. And then we'll go ahead and do one more contour towards the outside. And we have the eighth inch bit and we want 0.75. We're going to throw some and tabs to in here. Hold this well. in place. I like a third personally. Thick is nice. And about. So we'll go ahead and add. Since this is an 18 inch round, we might need a couple of these. Uh, if he is doing this on an on a pre-cut round, Home Depot and Lowe's sells the pre-cut circles, he could just skip this outside perimeter step. Uh, although he will want to change his origin to the center. In order to change that origin, you just go over here to the design. And set up. And we can change this to center right there. Since I had all those tool paths aside, it is going to take a moment to reconfigure them. It looks here like our design is not perfectly centered either, so we might want to Take this and move it over. And we can select it all like that. Oh, it could be as simple as that. Perfect. So we can show the simulation. This is not the easiest one to see this on. So we've done pretty well to um, match up to this design as much as possible. So thank you guys all for hanging out with me today and checking out this Carbide Create project. Have an awesome day, guys.